Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Tatiana and I'm very excited for today's video because if you're here, that means that you want to start your Amazon FBA business in 2020. So you see the opportunities there are. Um, I definitely do. I started my business five years ago and I can tell you one thing's for sure. People always wish that they started sooner. So the fact that you're watching this video right now means that you want to private label and source a product and you wanna launch it in the year of 2020. So that's why we're gonna bring you an updated product research tutorial because you know everything that you learned in 2020 or 2019 about product research, it might not be relevant to you today in 2020 because you know, one year has passed, Amazon's constantly updating their policies and what was applicable to you then may not be so applicable now. So we wanna bring you this new updated revised version of product research training. And I wanna let you know that this is just one way to do product research. There are so many different ways, so many different opinions about product research. So we're just gonna to present to you one method. And for that, I have brought on a very special guest. He is not new to this channel. His name is Bradley Sutton. He is the director of training at Helium 10. And he himself has launched hundreds of products. So he knows what he's talking about when it comes to product research. So I want to say thank you, Bradley, for being here today. I appreciate you taking the time and to share with our audience all of the tips and tricks about product research. Yes, it's great to be on here. Long time no see. Haven't uh, done a video with you in quite a while, so this will be this will be fun. Yes, yeah. And for those of you who are just joining in and who've never seen our videos together, we've got about maybe four or five, I'm not even sure, but I'll link them down in the description box for you because they are great videos. Bradley always over delivers with the value that he shares. All right. That's right. <laughs> you do. <laughs> so um, let's dive into it. Just like we always do on this channel, we like to get straight to it. So what would you say is the first step for someone who's brand new, a beginner, never started an Amazon business before? How do they get started? What do they look for? You know, what's step one of product research? Step one is actually just to get your mind right. All right. Um, it's not eBay. You know, if, if somebody's uh, familiar with eBay or it's not just general e-commerce, you know, uh, I, I've mentioned a lot of times, I, I love Gary Vee and what he recommends, hey, if somebody wants to become a vlogger or somebody wants to maybe like start their own business, it's best to do something you're passionate about because that's what's going to come out better. And that is 100% true, except for Amazon. Amazon, you can't just be passionate about something and think that you're going to have success because nine times out of 10, whatever you're passionate about is going to be something that maybe is already too saturated on Amazon. So Amazon is all about getting out of your comfort zone and going to a niche that you can have uh, the easiest barrier of entry. That means there's a lot of demand for it. Maybe there's not as much competition or the competition that's out there are underperforming. And even if it's something you have zero passion about or zero passion about, you know, you've got to do it. Like maybe the hot thing is egg skelters like you, i didn't even know what that was a few weeks ago do you know what an egg skelter is i don't I, I think it's like this little like thing that you put eggs and it's like a twirly thing and it's like a fancy thing to store your eggs me personally eggs make me throw up i hate eggs <laughs> but if i'm a seller or if i want to be a seller i gotta put that to the side and be like yeah. hey if if the egg skelter is there's there's opportunity there i i gotta i gotta be all yeah. all in on this so yeah that's the number one thing guys is just get your mind right be prepared to maybe sell something that you couldn't care less about it. And that's okay because that's sometimes the product is going to bring you money. Yeah. I, I love that because this actually is something that sometimes people get turned off by and they say, well, I want to, I don't want to just do something that I'm not passionate about. How is that going to fulfill me? And yes, to an extent that is true, but you have to look at it from maybe two different perspectives. Number one is you might not love the product. You don't have to fall in love with the product, but you have to fall in love with the customers that you serve. And once you love the people who you are serving, it's like, it doesn't matter what product you sell, because at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to provide value to your customers. And so it's learning how to love your audience. And then number two, it's also realizing that with Amazon FBA, you know, most people who are selling Amazon products, as you said, they aren't in love with their products, but they're in love with what this opportunity brings to their lives, right? Like a lot of us, we're not selling on Amazon because it's always been our passion to become Amazon sellers. We're selling on Amazon because it's an opportunity for us to now build our own business, to build a brand, to 
earn a new stream of income. And so that income can then provide for you time, freedom. You know, at the end of the day, that's what we do with our money is we buy ourselves more time so that we can then work on things that we are passionate about. So we have time to do things that we are passionate about, you know, for myself, like with the extra time that I'm given from through this business, through having my own online business, I get to do things that I never used to get to do and doing yoga classes and dance classes and cooking and like fun things like that. So you don't have to be passionate about the product itself, um, especially with your first product, maybe your second, your third, your fourth product, you find something you're more passionate about, but don't get fixed on the idea that I have to love this product. Yeah, but, 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 but trust us, guys, if you start making money uh, on this product and being able to live that lifestyle, your passion about that product is going to go <laughs> way up. And, and now all of a sudden, yeah, I'm passionate about this product. It allows me to uh, do all these crazy things. So just look forward, yeah. uh, look forward to that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, so what's step number two? All right, step number two um, is just start investigating. All right, so um, what we, you got to know what you're looking for. What you want is something that is in demand. On Amazon, there's already existing demand or the demand it, you know is coming. Um, and that's another thing that's important because it's not a Kickstarter or Indiegogo, um, right? Because you can't just say, oh, uh, um, you know, uh, I'm going to use Amazon to crowdfund this new amazing idea. Hmm. Amazon is about existing demand. People are searching on Amazon. If nobody knows something exists, they will never find you on Amazon because how are they going to search for something they don't even know exists? All hmm. right. So, We've got to find the existing demand. And then step uh, to step three, after we find the existing demand, is where are there these little pocket niches, you could say, or little pocket markets where there's not that many competitors or the competitors out there are just not doing very well. We know we can do better. And so you're trying to find this kind of conglomeration of those things, existing demand um, and lack of competition or something that you can do better and that's what we're going to try and capitalize on. Hmm. Okay. So how do we do this? Let me share my screen here. I'm going to. Thank you. I love screen yeah. shares because for me, I'm a very visual learner. So if we just talk about it, I'm not going to retain a lot of that information. I need to see it. Yes, absolutely. All right. So we are going to go to black box and uh, we did a video before about the black box for, for products, I believe. Um, I want to do just a, a little bit here on the black box for keywords because for 2020, I think this is going to be the best way to search for opportunity. And then maybe at the end of this, I'm going to give you guys a little nugget here that doesn't even have to do with Helium 10. And that's just like might blow some of your guys' minds. So look forward to that. Love now, it. real quick, uh, the first thing, I, like I said, existing demand. Well, how do we know if there's demand on Amazon? Well, we use tools like Helium 10 and check their estimated search volume. So I'm going to say, hey, show me something that has at least 5,000 search volume. Now, real quick, Again, as a review of what is not opportunity on Amazon, let me go to neck pillows. All right, so we look here on neck pillows and what we see here uh, on the first three organic ones that come up is 1,695 reviews and 2,700 reviews and, and 504 reviews. Let me, let me just check uh, what kind of estimated sales these have. This page is still loading here. Um, but this is something that would not be opportunity because like you, for example, let's say this one right here, Tatiana was like, let's just say it was a similar product to these and it, and it was like five reviews. Would you click on this before you click on this five star one that has 1700 reviews? I wouldn't because the other listing has much more social proof reviews exactly. are social proof and people they want when they when someone sees that someone else has purchased that product it gives them confidence in making that purchase so as a new seller when i come in and i start selling my product and i don't have any reviews i have to build up those reviews and my competitors have 2000 reviews it's going to be so hard for someone to decide okay i'm going to click on this newbies listing and buy their product instead of someone who has all of that social proof yeah, absolutely. That, that is so important because, um, yeah, th this might be a, a heavy demand product, but you would never perform well versus these other guys who have all kinds of reviews. And then look at some of their estimated sales of some of these guys who are on the top of the page. Here's one guy who's making a million dollars a month on this one product. Insane. That's crazy. Here's one that's making almost $2 million, a memory foam one. And yeah. the other are making 70000 100000 uh, 500,000, 400,000. I mean, it's crazy. So this is 
an example of what is not opportunity. So with that in mind, we kind of flip this. So that shows that this is an example of a product with a lot of demand, which shows that they're making so much money, right? And someone who's a newbie might think, oh, wow, this is a great opportunity for me because they're doing a million dollars a month. That means that I should sell a product like this. But you're saying no, because that there's just too much competition there. Yeah. Now, if you had, if you were a millionaire already and, and had a big brand name and you could drop $200,000 on some huge okay. campaign to launch, yeah, you know, go ahead. You could probably be successful neck pillow, but I don't have that kind of money. Uh, I'm sure maybe a lot of you guys don't either. So I want to show you guys methods that's going to work for kind of like the, the any man or any woman here, uh, regardless of your budget. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so with that in mind, too much reviews equals bad. Well, what does that mean? Maybe small reviews equals potential. So I'm going to say, show me a keyword phrase where if I would search for it, the majority um, of the ones on first page maybe have less than, let's just say 80 reviews. Like they're, they're kind of mainly, a lot of them are going to be in the single to double digits. Um, another thing I'm just going to put here price of, uh, maybe like, let's just say 15 to $35. Now here's the thing. If you don't have that much money to start, um, I wouldn't put a price, um, filter here. The reason why I'm putting a minimum of 15 is sometimes when you get those eight, $9 products, yeah, you, you could probably get in there for, you know, maybe only buying three, four, five hundred dollars worth of inventory uh, and you're selling it, but your your profit margin is not going to be that high. It's going to take you a lot longer to scale. But if that's all you can afford, there is nothing wrong with that. All right. Yeah. But if you want to like be able to scale a little bit faster, go for the products that have a little bit more leeway in there. Um, because if you think about it, eight dollars, like what do you think, Tatiana? Like the shipping is going to be. Uh, shipping an Amazon fee is going to be like what, like three, four bucks probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. So the margins right. are just going to be so much lower. And I, I, this is, you know, one thing that I try and teach people like, yes, you can start Amazon FBA with a very low budget. And you would do that by selecting products that are probably selling for a cheaper price on Amazon, like $10, $12, but, and that means that, you know, for you to source those products, they're going to cost very little. So for example, my first product that I sold on Amazon would cost me 20 cents a unit from the manufacturer in China, but I was limited with how much I could sell that product for. I couldn't sell it for more than, you know, 14, $15. Um, and so when you are, you know, starting this business, if you don't have a lot of money to get started, you could go that route, but it's just going to take you forever to really mm -hmm. see those big profits. Um, and instead, you know, looking for, you know, products within the 15 to $35 price range, you're going to now have products that, you know, you're just going to profit so much better. You don't have to sell thousands and thousands of units to make an actual significant profit each month. Exactly. Very true. Uh, on the other side, you'll, you guys will notice I put a, a max 35. So, what, there's a lot of great products out there, maybe that are $80, $90. Um, but think about that. Like if your minimum order quantity on a $90 product, let's just say your cost is only 30 bucks or 20 bucks. But if then if you, if you have to order 1000 of it, well, that means before you even get to Amazon, you've already dropped $20,000 on, on, on your inventory. So yeah. most of us don't have a spare. I know I don't, I don't have a spare $20,000 sitting in my bank that I can just drop on that before I even start worrying about all the other fees involved. So if you do have that kind of money though, absolutely. I would actually put a minimum here sometimes on the price because mm. you know, these higher price products don't have um, too much competition. Totally. So uh, I'm just going to pick a couple of categories here. Like, let me. So, so what, what would you say? I know people ask me this all the time. What are the best categories to sell on? for Amazon. Cause Amazon has all these categories, which you're showing here. Yeah. You know, not all of them are great categories for people who want a private label and sell products on Amazon. So what would you say are the best ones? The cool thing is with using this kind of method, you can find good uh, opportunity in any one of these categories. Now, some of them might be more difficult, like in the cell phone category, there might be a lot, a lot of competition, but there might be some random, like a, a Chinese or Indian or Korean cell phone, maybe that's not popular in the United States that all the big sellers are, are not making cell phone cases for, but who knows? Maybe there's one that you could find even in there. Mm -hmm. In the appliances category, yeah, it's probably gonna be difficult to, to look for products, but I wouldn't say that there's one uh, or a few here that are just better than every other because by using this method, by definition, no matter what category, 
you are already looking for all these indicators of what could right. be a good opportunity. Right. Do you have any in mind that you would like to try? I want to try some weird ones. Like I'm going to do industrial. <laughs> I'm going to pick one right off the bat, industrial and scientific, yeah. because that just is a normal person would probably think there's yeah. no way you're going to find a, pro a product yeah. there. So why, so why don't you give me one now? Um, you could maybe try, uh, let's say pet supplies. Pet supplies. I do want to mention, you know, like right now you're using the Helium 10 um, mm -hmm. platform to do this research. And for those of you who've never done product research before, before this tool was available and other similar tools, you would have to go into Amazon, go into your Amazon.com um, or whatever marketplace you decide to sell on, and you would have to do your product research there. And so you would have to pull all this data yourself. You would have to analyze it. You'd have to do some math. And it was just such a lengthy process to find viable product opportunities. But now that there exist apps and tools like Helium 10, you can do what Bradley's doing right now. Just plug in some data, have some, you know, different requirements and criteria, and then boom, you have all of this information available for you in this easy to read format. And this is just the most efficient way to do product research. Yep. And um, I, two already, uh, come on, I don't have a, a dog anymore. I haven't had a dog in a while. So I don't know what this means. Do you know what this means? Um, yeah, actually, that's so funny. I was just talking to someone about this product the other day. Um, so basically, it's like this mat with like this grass that the dogs go into and they dig out their treats or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, there it's like an entertainment for the dogs. Wow. Okay, so this, I'm going to pull up that one. And then this other stuff you would think is like, wait a minute, how is this even um, an opportunity? But let's take a look here. Um, and then that's a great thing too. Like you discover products that you wouldn't think of yourself because you've exactly. never used it or you've never heard of it before. And so for me, when I'm doing product research, I don't avoid the products that I don't know anything about. I click on the products that I know nothing about because those are products that maybe other people wouldn't be clicking on because it's not something that, you know, they relate to or understand. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now take a look here. Um, Remember, guys, what we had shown you with the neck pillows of what's not opportunity, like the top guys are 1,700 reviews, 2,700 reviews. Well, look what we have here, and this is because we, we use that. We have the number one guy. He's got 400, but still only three digits. We got the number two guy only has 43 reviews, all right, and it's only four stars. Uh, look at some of these other ones on here. Look at this, 70 reviews, 40 reviews, 40, 40, 40. This is so different than what is saturated. So this is like a newer uh, niche, and then again, the whole reason is hey, if I'm a brand new product and I come in with only five or 10 reviews or something, it's not so far-fetched that somebody would click on mine compared to these because the difference between psychologically 10 reviews and 40 reviews is not that much compared to like 10 reviews and, and 2,000 reviews. And, and so, by the way, if I can mention something. Sure. So this product is something that I've been monitoring since like the beginning of the year. And all of most of these sellers are new sellers because this is kind of a newer product on Amazon. Um, and all of a sudden you have all of these now private label sellers because they saw the opportunity here. And you can also tell because they don't have so many reviews. They haven't been here for so long. Yeah. Um, but that just shows people that like people will say, Oh, Amazon is dead or like there's no more opportunities for sellers. No, there's always new products surfacing on Amazon, new product opportunities. You just have to go out and find them. And so this is a Absolutely. great example of that. Absolutely. Um, and this would have come up, you know, maybe even months before, and then you could have been even easier, you know, and, and we're not saying, hey, everybody go out and just because Tatiana was talking yeah. about this and Bradley found it and, you know, don't go out there and everybody, 75 people go order snuffle, snuffle mats, but we're just showing you the process. You know, yeah. there's, there's a lot more that goes into this than uh, yeah. to look for one. Uh, another one here that we saw from the other category, I'm assuming this is, I don't know why this is industrial and scientific mm -hmm. category, but as you can see, this is the industrial and scientific category. Right. Um, Look at this cake box is something you would think is how can that be opportunity? Look at this. The number one guy, the Amazon's choice even only has 23 reviews. So totally. it'd be pretty easy to get and, on the first page. Here. And here's a great product for someone, for those of you with, this is your first product that you've ever launched. A product like this is easy because it's simple. It's lightweight. It's small. There's nothing complicated about it. It's not a piece of technology. Like it's as basic as it gets. And that makes your life so much easier. And so, you know, this is a great, potentially we haven't really looked into this product yet, but this yeah. could be a great product idea for a new seller. And also Absolutely. one thing I, I noticed is you skipped over all of the sponsored ads. Can you yes. explain to people why you don't take those into consideration? Yeah. So anybody, I mean, I, I could pay 
for a snuffle mat for dogs to actually show up here, uh, you know, if I wanted to. So just because that it shows up here at the beginning and a sponsored ad, it doesn't mean that that's performing well on this page. But these ones here that organically are, are ranking here on this page, the only way that Amazon puts things here is if they have good interaction with this keyword. So I know that these are the ones that are performing well for it. These ones could be performing well for it, but, or they could just be somebody trying to pay money to get visibility for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so here, uh, th this is definitely, you know, something interesting. Now here is the, the quick nugget um, that I wanted to give out to you guys that even in the categories that are um, saturated, like neck pillows, what you could do is go to other websites like that have handmade stuff or idea boards like Etsy, um, Pinterest. Let, let, let's, let's, let's do Pinterest for even this one. And then what happens is Pinterest, and this is like for my buddy, Tim Jordan, you know, taught me this method, but on Pinterest, sometimes they're like six months or so ahead of Amazon. So let's type in cake boxes. And I've never searched for cake boxes. I don't think on, on here. So here's the thing. So what I notice here, what, what I notice here is that almost all the top ones right now are like these just simple, plain white ones, right? Like there's maybe one brown one here and there's one pink one. But what I wanna do is, I'm not sure if it's gonna happen here, but I wanna look on Pinterest for what are the top performing ones and see if there's any trends, all right? Mm -hmm. Like if I were to notice that all of them had this like string on mm -hmm. it or something like as a ribbon, if half of them had it, I mean, I only see one or two, or here's one that has this. What, me, what that means is that all the men and women who are putting these on their boards as ideas, the most common ones that are getting really good traction are ones that have the string or a ribbon or maybe one that's a see-through. So what happens is it happens first a lot of times on Etsy or Pinterest or these other websites, and then Amazon kind of catches up like six months later. So this is a way to kind of get ahead of the curve a little bit uh, and be one of the first ones to get like a kind of up and trending new way. And that's something I don't think uh, I've ever talked about to your audience and barely to my audience, but wanted to give you guys yeah. a good nugget for 2020. Start using these other websites, guys. Yeah, I love that. I actually did not know that. So this is the first time I'm hearing that. And I think that makes total sense. So basically like, say we decide, okay, I want, I'm going to source um, a cake box. And instead of just looking at my competitors and copying exactly what they're doing, I could first go to Pinterest and see any commonalities that are showing up when I type in that keyword. And that's going to give me some ideas of what I could potentially, you know, private label and source on Amazon that will be maybe more of a success. Yep. I'm doing that here for now, this for the, um, for the dog one. And then you could see like different things. Like, w did you guys notice there was a lot of the same exact, <laughs> same exact thing mm -hmm. that uh, we have on Amazon. Look at that three out of the top five are all this almost ex identical product. But then on Pinterest, you can kind of see, well, what's the trends? Like what are dog owners on Pinterest? Like right. really um, liking to do. And then you could see there's a lot of different ones and it'll give you different ideas on yeah. how to be a little bit different because nobody wants to see another one. That's just this brown Same. one with green. I mean, there's three of them. I mean, mm -hmm. if I was a buyer, I'd be like, okay, already, how is this three different? I want to see some variety. Well, there, there you have it. There's a way to get ideas on how to differentiate your product too. Right. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw like a few rainbow ones, I think on Pinterest. So that could be something to consider because yep. there yep. aren't really many of that. Yep, I see that too. Yep, absolutely. So mm -hmm. there you have it, guys. Um, peop, don't let people, your friends or family tell you that Amazon is dead or that uh, there's no more opportunity. There is plenty of opportunity. Arguably, there might be even more opportunity if you just think about the size of Amazon. Now, I can't wait to see what the, the numbers are. I think, what was last year, like $220 billion or something like that. So we'll see when the next report comes out um, what 2019 was. But guys, this is still the time to take advantage of, of the Amazon FBA model and make some money for yourself and your family. Yes. Couldn't agree more. And honestly, that's why I get so excited. I'm excited for this video um, to be released because, you know, people who are watching this for the first time, you guys are beginners and you're thinking about selling on Amazon. And all I can say, all we can really say is just give you that encouragement because yes, maybe your family and friends aren't doing it. And so it makes you feel skeptical or scared to start this business, but it's real. Amazon needs third party sellers like your, you, yourself and myself um, in order for them to continue to grow as they are. So 
huge opportunity here. Um, and for those of you who have not tried Helium 10 yet, Helium 10 is a fantastic tool. I use it whenever I do product research. Um, and Bradley has given us a special discount because you guys are subscribed to my channel. You can get 50% off your first month of Helium 10. So you can try it for 50% off. And if you don't like it, you don't have to subscribe anymore. But just go to tatianajames.com slash Helium 10. I'll also link it in the description box for you. And there'll be a coupon code on that page once you go there so that you can get that discount. But you know, there's so many things that you can do with Helium 10. We only scratched the surface with the black box, but as you saw, there's so many different tools. Um, it would take, you know, a long time to go through each and every one of those, but um, it's, it's more than just product research. Once you get your product up on Amazon, it's listing op optimization and just so many other things that you can do. So definitely recommend checking that out. And Bradley, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. I look forward to our next video together. We're gonna to do one about keyword research for 2020. So if that interests you guys, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell symbol so you get notified when that video will come out next. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and take care guys, have a fantastic day, bye.